the first thing, when I, when I first thought about this painting, the first thing that came to my mind, that behind a, a royal monarch lion, you'd have a big anarchy sign. That was the first thing that came to my mind. You'd have a big, the A, the big anarchy sign. You'd have loads of other stuff as well, but it was the anarchy sign. Now that's almost got lost. There it is, you know, and then someone's come along here. Look, it, it's the sovereigns of anarchy. That's, if you read that, what else can it say? It says, says anarchy. So, but that has taken a much less important part in the painting after all, but that's the first thing that was on my mind. Whilst I was painting the piece, there's a door here, and just the brick wall going straight across was like fine, but it wanted something to break up. Now, so I thought, well, try a door. What kind of door would it be? So this is like, like an old steel door. I mean, there's grime and grotty stuff behind there, maybe. Everybody's used their imagination. But I think that's worked so well, the way that wall ends and you've got this extra dimension of it going round there and this little bit of the sunlight. And this, the, the letter A here, to work out how that perspective would affect the, the direction that the... I had to get a piece of folder, a piece of paper, and draw an A on it and fold it up to see how that works. But then a door, with the, the gap under the door, that, that I thought, oh, you'd have a mouse coming out of the gap to have a little look round a little mouse coming out of the gap. So I decided that we'd have a mouse in there and, and this is the only painting, there's, there's only two paintings of this ilk where I've ever had the interaction with two animals. So the, the, um, the mouse is coming out of the door and then there was a, a famous artist, Terence Cuneo, who is um, one of my heroes actually, wonderful painter, who used to put a little mouse in his paintings and almost a little comic mouse in his paintings, a little bit like that. So that reminded me of him. And so that's why I've put the TC there and it actually says Cuneo's Corner here. Um, and then, of course, this is a green door and it's Den's door, because I'm thinking Lion's Den. So it's Den's door and then someone else has put Den's green door, because then I'm thinking, well, what lies behind the green door? The reason the door's green is because then I started thinking about the song. There's an old piano and it's playing hot behind the green door, you know, so the door had to be green. Um, so where, where it says Den's door, somebody's put green. And then here it says, remember what the door mouse said. And of course the door mouse is from Alice in Wonderland. And then, but the door, I've spelt it as in D-O-O-R, door mouse. And then somebody's inserted green door mouse. And of course, remember what the door mouse said. Well, those of you who know about the band Jefferson Airplane, that will probably relate to you. If not, go Google it. So how many faces? Well, there's one, look. Two, these are the obvious ones. One, two, all right. Then three, Lambsy's face. Four, Scarman. Right, okay. Well, the mouse has got a face, five. So then we've got another face here on the lion bar, six, and then on the, 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 the cat food, seven, eight. Well, I like the music. I'm not a Scar fan. I don't know anything about Scar. It's just that that w was perfect to go with the picture. And of course, the uh, Remember What the Dormouse says is a musical reference as well. Um, and then, well, the free could be a musical reference. This is lion heart, there's a heart symbol here, and, and that's very similar to the heart logo that the, the rock band Heart used. So, um, you know, um, that, that's another musical reference. This here, um, beaten track I rain, that's another musical reference. I'm not gonna say what it is. It could be off or on the beaten track I rain. So some people will know what that is. Others can go Google it. And then this here, Maybe I'm a Leo is another track by a rock band, an old, old classic rock band called Deep Purple. Or I'm, I'm a fan of some of their stuff, but not all of their stuff. And whilst I was painting this picture, I was listening to some of their music, thinking, OK, the, 
you know, they rant and rave about these albums, but they don't rant and rave about these albums. In my opinion, this album is the best album they ever did, but that's not the one that gets most of the praise. This album and this album are the albums that get most of the praise, and I'm not so sure about those. So I was listening to a particular Deep Purple album, and yeah, I thought, yeah, this is a pretty good album. And the second track, I'm thinking, yeah, this is a good track. Let's go see what it's called. And it just happened to be called Maybe I'm a Leo. And so that's just one of those things that happened, like, you know, automatically. I thought, well, that's got to go on the painting then, hasn't it? So there it is. Like I was saying, the first thing that, that, that struck me was that you need a big anarchy symbol, which is really not become so important in the piece as, as other things did. But then the other things I was, that hit me straight away was, oh, I suppose it's a generational thing, I was thinking Lenny the Lion. Well, you, could need, you need a Lenny in there somewhere, which is quite, <laughs> well, I thought it was obvious, but you were saying earlier on it's not so obvious. So I thought, well, you need a Lenny in there somewhere. That's one of the most obvious things. Then you also need a Simba, because that's, almost, that's also one of the most obvious things. So then I'm thinking, well, how are you going to get Lenny and Simba? And with graffiti art, graffiti artists come along and spray something on the wall. Then later on, or the next day, someone comes along and sprays something over the top of it. And then someone comes along and sprays something over the top of that. So you get this overlapping, like you've got these yellow letters that have gone underneath the white letters, which have gone underneath the pink letters. And then people have sp sprayed things on the top of that. So you get this weird... and and. Most of the time you can't read what it says anyway because their tags and logos are so strange. But even when you can read it, it gets covered up and covered up. So it's very difficult to work out what it is. But what I'm trying to do with a painting like this is I'm trying to make it just possible to work out what it, what it actually says. With the letter, with these yellow letters here, it really doesn't matter. You never, I, don't, I don't know what that says. But with the, the white, I want you to try and work out, and it takes a bit of doing, but that's an S, then behind there, there's, there's a, what's this, there's a dot on top of what is a, it must be a letter I, and that's definitely an M. Then the B here, this was strange because the B then has gone round the, the corner into the doorway there, so that plays with the perspective, which, you know, when you painted the picture, you have to stop and think about how that works, and then somebody's, you know, graffiti painted the A, which is doing the, the opposite thing, coming back out again on, on you know, when the, the doorway comes out. But you've got S-I-M-B-A. So you've got Lenny and Simba, which were, to me, the most important names to have on the painting. But then I've tried to get everything else in as well. I've not got everything else in. You know, there's loads of stuff I could have done. Anyway, there you go. You see, I've got my reference for the lion. I had to change the tail quite a bit and little bits of changes here. I'll tell you, the reference I was using, it was lovely. It was nice photographic reference with a lot of the details and information I need, but it didn't have any ears. Somehow, the ears had disappeared. It looked right, but this was all, the light was so intense that that ear had disappeared completely. And for some reason, this ear had disappeared as well because the, the fur, the mane on this line was so pronounced and so strong that you couldn't see the ears. So I painted all this in and it looked great. And I stood back one day and I thought, well, it's got no ears. Somebody's bound to say, well, where's its ears? So I had to go back and change what I'd done and play with it and put ears in there, you know. And so that's one of the things that I had to change. And that was the, probably the most challenging part of it to, give a lion ears that hadn't got any ears, sort of thing. But the other thing is then, I'm putting it into a background which I'm sort of designing myself. So then you've got perspective issues. The light on this picture, where's the light coming from? It's coming from over here somewhere. Shafts of light, the sun's rising or the sun's setting and it's coming through quite a narrow alleyway or whatever. And then it shines onto the ground and illuminates the lion. And then this shaft of light here is probably the one that appears this side again with another one, which, because of the way the light is shining down, it doesn't appear on the ground until you get to this, this bit of it. So, but the main challenge for me was the perspective because it's on this footpath. And traditionally in the UK, the, the, the slabs that you walk on are two foot, 
two foot wide by three foot long. So assuming that's what they are, that can define how big everything is. And getting these angles was like ridiculous. The, the amount of work I had to do to, to get those angles all to work right, because, you know, the, the, the cracks in the pavement there, as it comes round here, they'll, they'll gradually change their perspective. Now, I haven't got any reference to work from. I've got to sort of use my artistic license and become almost a, a, a scientist in a way, trying to work out what that would look like. And then I'm thinking, well, how big is the line? How big is the line in relation to these slabs? If that's only two foot, so that bit of the line, well, it's diagonally across the slab, so it could be, could be somewhat more than two feet, maybe almost three feet. As, in, as would that bit be. So there's six foot. Is that big enough for a line? Well, you've got the extra bit with the foot hanging over the back, over the front here, and then this bit over the back as well. That's a reasonable size line. So I think it's about right there. So that'll, that'll probably do. And it, it, it took days to come to that conclusion of messing about and, and changing things around. Now at one stage, I'll tell you what, I've, I've not got them in my studio anymore because it's like this rubber matting you can get and you buy them, I bought them from Halfords or somewhere and they're two foot square and they've got these, like they, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, they lock into each other, it's like a, a floor for workshops and things. I think if you drop a spanner on the floor, it sort of bounces on this, like a rubber cushion. And it's, I've never been able yet to use it properly as flooring, but I've found a multitude of other jobs for it. But my studio has got a concrete floor and it's not level and everything in my studio is on wheels so I have problems with things rolling around and I, 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 I had this problem so I put this rubber flooring down whilst I was doing this piece and that stopped the, the, the stuff rolling around and these two foot square panels were on the floor then so what I did I got some masking tape and I used them to create I put masking tape along and across the, what, are, what would be the gaps in the pavement and I've, I made it so that you'd got two foot by three foot slabs on the floor. And then I, I stood back and I looked at it from an angle and measured the distances with, if, if the line was lying. I've got photographic reference of all this stuff which I can reveal sometime. So I was using these square panels that I'd got on, on using as my flooring at the time I was using that to calculate what the distances were across a slab like that, if you'd got more of an angle, and um, came to the conclusion that this was about right. But the other thing I had to do, <laughs> and it's very difficult to explain all this stuff because this footpath originally, you see the, the three blue bricks. Originally there was only one row of blue bricks. The footpath went all the way up to there. Now it's very difficult to visualise when you see the painting, the finished painting like this, but at the time it looked okay. And when I say it looked okay, it did look okay, but after a while I decided there was something not right with it. It made the pavement a very big pavement. It was like a 17 foot wide pavement, which you, you get, but not usually. And I wanted this to be a smaller pavement, and I wanted it to I wanted the lion to block it up. You weren't going to walk down the path and have a gap where you could get round the back of the lion. I wanted it to be blocking the path. So, and I could also see that the perspective wasn't quite right. The, the ground wasn't flat enough, if you like. You know, it's like, if you look at something from a high up angle, you're sort of getting more ground. It's, it, it, changes where the horizon line is. Whereas if you crouch down and look at something, it changes where the horizon line is and it, it compresses where... You see, just explaining this, trying to think, without actually looking at, mis, looking at it myself, I can't quite remember how it works. And we, I can look at something and work out what's going on. But that kind of thing, that it wasn't... The, you know, you, you were seeing too much path and I could tell something wasn't right. So I thought, well, bring it down. Bring that up. 
if you like, we'll call that the horizon line where the wall starts. Instead of starting, taking the path there, bring it down to there. So I did that and it instantly looked better and it instantly made the path smaller. So there was less room to get round the back of the line. It also made this, this street sign taller, which was a good thing because I was worried about it was too short before. It was only a, a low down street sign. So that instantly made that taller. But it also meant that, because I'd already sketched the mouse on it at this stage, so now I've got a flying mouse up here because I'd brought the, the, the door down as well. So I'd got like two mice, but it still wasn't enough. So I brought it down another brick and by the time I got there, it was right. Now I can't remember, but by then I'd probably got three mice. But it also meant that I'd got three rows of blue bricks. Unless I went back, and, and it would have been easy enough to do, and change these blue ones to red ones. But I, you know, I thought, well, no, I've seen two rows of blue bricks before. In fact, I've seen three rows of blue bricks. So, no, leave them blue. And that, that, that's what I did, you know. So, and that's one of the reasons there's three rows of blue bricks there, because ordinarily I would have just had one. And, you know... Although it looked okay there and it looked better there, it looks even better there. And it also meant that there was no room, no room at all to walk round the back of this character. So, do we dare ask you the question about what you're painting next? I don't know. <laughs> I've got a suggestion. Have you? There, there was a suggestion. I don't take suggestions. No, we, did have a, we have been asked about flamingos. Flamingos, they've got skinny legs, haven't they? Well, I've got skinny legs. What are you trying to say with that? I, I, I think your legs are all right. And I've, I've got, not got a problem with flamingos' legs either. But, you know, um, I, look, I'm all right with flamingos. I quite like flamingos. I like a wacky bird, you know. And to me, a flamingo is wacky enough. I don't know what I'd do with them. But believe me, there's flamingos and we always ask. a multitude of other... We always ask him this question every time we see him, don't we? What are you painting next? And we never get a straight no, answer. No. 